For many centuries, humanity considered the Earth as the center of the solar system, the center of the universe. Now we know that it's very far from the truth. Moreover, the Earth and the Sun are not as special as we used to think about them. There are millions of planets just like ours, and millions of stars just like the Sun. But what does this exactly mean for us? Well, all of these facts are speaking for themselves. It's highly possible that we're not alone in space after all. Exciting, huh? The possibility of the presence of another civilization in our universe has been haunting humanity for many centuries. And while the thought of not being all alone in space is very tempting, it also brings up a lot of questions. And here is the main one. Do we really have a chance to find another civilization on another planet? Or at least some simple forms of life? Well, with our technology nowadays, we made advanced searches in our solar system. And while we didn't find any extraterrestrial intelligence, there have been some interesting discoveries. Today, we will take you on a small journey to our neighbor space objects. Together, we will see which ones were considered more suitable for life and if any forms of life were ever found on them. We will tell you how scientists search for both microorganisms on asteroids and advanced civilizations that allegedly can collect all of the energy of a star or even an entire galaxy. Let's go. The first space object that was considered to have life on it was, of course, the Moon. Well, it really had it once in a while in the early 70s, when 12 astronauts were landing on it. Moreover, they were able to collect some samples. Unfortunately, the soil samples didn't have any signs of life. By the way, after the astronauts returned from the Moon, they were being placed in a mobile quarantine facility which was a converted Airstream trailer. The crew was spending 21 days there. The purpose of the quarantine was the prevention of the spread of any possible infections from the moon, although their existence was very unlikely. The quarantine requirement was eliminated after Apollo 14, once it was proven that the moon was sterile. But does that mean that our nearest cosmic body is lifeless? Well, we can't be so sure about that. On the surface of the moon, of course, the conditions are tough, but under it, they can be much closer to the Earth. For now, we know at least two things for sure. First, there is definitely water on the moon in the form of ice blocks. And second, under the surface of the moon, the temperature is not dropping as much as on it, from 200 degrees to minus 150 degrees Celsius. Anyway, there are still many things that we haven't discovered yet about our satellite. Dozens of meteorites have been found on Earth that came from Mars. Hundreds of samples came from the Moon, fully independently, not brought by astronauts or vehicles. These samples were just simply knocked out by meteorites and jumped to Earth. Obviously, vice versa also happens a lot. Some pieces from Earth sometimes fly in the direction of the moon, so it would be very interesting to discover how and where Earth microbes end up while traveling to the moon. Did they die, or maybe they somehow adapted there? Well, for now, we don't have the exact answers. Anyway, the other objects in our solar system that were commonly considered to have life on them were Venus and Mars. But why exactly Venus? Well, depending on the distance from the Sun, the planets receive different amounts of heat. So there is already a relatively small range of distance from the Sun that is considered as a zone of possible life. So in the habitable zone, the temperature on the surface of the planet is close to Earth's, and by that we mean that it's from 0 to 100 degrees Celsius. This is the range where water can be in a liquid state at normal pressure. And, well, water is life, at least for all the creatures that we are familiar with on Earth. But there's something more. 
the habitable zone gradually moves away from the sun. When our star was younger, it did not heat the planets that much, and the zone of life was a little closer to the star. At that time, the planet Venus was in the habitable zone. The first photos of Venus came to Earth in the 60s, after American and Soviet spacecraft flew by. These images immediately revealed two interesting facts. First, the atmosphere of Venus rotates very quickly, while the planet itself rotates very slowly, namely in 243 Earth days. This spinning occurs in the opposite direction, not in the direction of its movement around the Sun. Astronomers still haven't found any explanation for that. The very slow rotation of the planet is also a mystery that is yet to be discovered. Another thing is the Venus atmosphere that lives its own life. The upper cloud layers are rapidly flying around it. This is called super rotation. As a result, the atmosphere seems to be divided into two parts. One part of the cloud layer in the form of a giant spiral is wound on one pole. The second part in the form of a second giant spiral is wound on the north pole. At the pole, the gas rushes into the funnel and descends into the lower atmosphere and returns to the equator. There is no detailed explanation for this phenomenon either. Before these observations, the conditions of Venus seemed very close to those on Earth, and many considered it as a planet raging with life. But because of the dense atmosphere, which is almost entirely made up of carbon dioxide and nitrogen, the average temperature on the planet's surface is about 500 degrees Celsius. The conditions there are very harsh. Most possibly, Venus doesn't have any form of life, and probably never has. The next cosmic body in the habitable zone is Mars. This planet, too, for almost 100 years, seemed to be quite a good place for the life of extraterrestrial civilizations. In the middle of the 19th century, some thin lines were discovered on the surface of Mars, which were named channels. It has been suspected that intelligent beings built a system to pump water from the polar caps to the arid equatorial regions. Of course, today we realize that it was just an illusion. We sent several vehicles to the Mars surface that conducted biological experiments. None of them found any microbes. Most likely, the surface of Mars is lifeless. It is not covered tightly with a layer of the atmosphere as on Earth. Therefore, ultraviolet light, X-rays, and solar cosmic rays are constantly burning it which makes the possibility of life there impossible. But that's not all. As with the Moon, the conditions under the surface of Mars can be much better. Below, we can supposedly find water, a comfortable temperature, and protection from radiation. And what's most important, we already know places on Mars where it's possible to go under the surface. Scientists have found on the red planet some round entrances to vertical caves situated on the Martian shield volcano Arzia Mons. They are pretty large, about 100 meters in diameter. On Earth, we call them sinkholes. And well, who knows what is in the depths of these caves. However, it's still unclear how we can send a machine there and get all the necessary data. One more important discovery. In 2009, with the help of spacecraft and ground-based telescopes, areas with methane were discovered. On Earth, it's usually a product of life activity, either cattle or microorganisms. Another source of methane is volcanic activity, but the red planet has cooled down a long time ago. Now we don't see any active volcano there. So, where's the methane coming from? We don't know that now. And one more fact. In 1984, a fragment of a Martian meteorite called Allen Hills 84001 was discovered in Antarctica. After taking air samples from the meteorite, 
The scientists concluded that this is the atmosphere of Mars. But what exactly was so intriguing about this object? After carefully scanning the structure of the meteorite with a microscope, scientists discovered fossilized structures that are very similar to our terrestrial bacteria. Moreover, they even saw supposed traces of their life activity. The structures resemble some modern terrestrial bacteria and their appendages. Though some are much smaller than any known extant Earth microbes, others are in the order of 100 to 200 nanometers in size, within the size limits of Pelagibacter ubique, the most common bacteria on Earth, which ranges from 120 to 200 nanometers. Well, just like the hypothetical Martian nanobacteria. RNA organisms, which are expected to have lived on Earth during the time period when the meteorite was ejected from Mars, may also have been as small or smaller than these structures. But some of the structures are even larger, 1 to 2 microns in diameter. The smallest structures are too small to contain all the systems required by modern life. Were they microorganisms? We can't be sure about that. As you could notice, there's still a possibility that the other planets of the solar system have some forms of life on them. We're going to tell you everything about the latest discoveries of astronomers. Subscribe to our channel, hit like if you liked our video, and stay tuned.